poetry in which every one speaks like this. <laughs> You're an innovation in syncopation and there's nothing wrong with a little repetition, repetition. Words carry a theme, a thematical scheme, a stream of consciousness, an opportunity to undress, to confess the secrets of the mind. And there's nothing wrong with a little repetition, repetition. Emancipated, you find yourself captivated by the utterances, wordy dances, simile and metaphor romances. And there's nothing wrong with a little repetition, repetition. Competition, the hip-hop magicians who come together in battle names out of a hat will determine your opponent, the ferocity of their flow met. Like a battering ram, you have been slammed. And there's nothing wrong with a little repetition. Repetition. Take your time. Relishing the phrases sublime. And remember, it's not a crime if the words don't sound like the ones at the end of the previous line. <laughs> takes a while. And there's nothing wrong with the little repetition. I thought I would do some women theme and poetry because I, this is International Women's Day, if you didn't know. Yes, that's fine. So this, well, I love these are my experiences anyway, but this is specifically, I think, a female experience. I am too hot and too tired and too alone and crave her company like I craved her ice cream van counterpart in summers of old, waiting for the jingle jangle music. When she comes, she will bring relief to me. No more tick-tocking of the biological clocking, counting down the days, the minutes till the ways. She will make my life better and end this wanting, haunting. Because she haunts me, you know. My Casper, the friendly ghost, no insidious host is my child yet to be. She comforts me with just the right amount of sweetness when I'm a complete mess. Innocence is dangerous though, and I fear for her when she appears. I can teach her about pretenses, arm her defences, but my ice cream sundae of a girl is no recipe to be followed. She will make her own way, come what may. I will try to instill in her, fill up her frosted glass with her vanilla base, not because of race, but a blank canvas. Include toffee for determination. Give her the ability to really chew. Fudge and she will simply fudge all things. Marshmallows will result in a marshmallow of a girl. Scottish Highland toffee and the determination to work her way systematically through a situation. A sprinkling of peanuts as being toxic to some people can be an advantage. Build up her force field to make others yield. Flakes of marzipan will make her an acquired taste. This will mean she will have to work. Do not add chocolate. Every woman will desire her. She will be devoured entirely and there will be nothing left but an empty, fragile glass. No hot fudge sauce will only result in content lost, a memory of what she used to be. Melted drips, her fabric grips and stains my tablecloth. This is how I envision my vision, my decision for a person who might not listen, but I can dream my ice cream dream and hope and scheme for her. The beauty will be in the meeting and the eating. <laughs> this is a short one and I wrote it about my sister, but I get it's about everyone, about everyone who has experienced this. So. Mirror, mirror on the wall, when she stopped eating, we thought it was temporary. She assured us she was just feeling nauseous and it would pass. It had started with nuts. She would scan packets to see if the contents had been in contact with nuts. You don't have an allergy, we said. You've never had one. 
With that attack I had that time, she announced triumphantly, brandishing the memory on our faces. That was anxiety, we quietly told her. Still, if she wanted to avoid nuts, it was cute, wasn't it? A charming quirk, and nobody really needs peanuts. We couldn't eat them either, though. With her present, this could almost be expected as we honoured her request, but we could be alone, locked in a hotel room in France, and she would know, ring us, ask us what we were eating, tell us allergies ran in the family. We kept eating. It was control of what she put in her body. Not because of fat content, but a desire to go all natural. It resulted in the same thing, a salad. So we couldn't tell either way. Mura, Mura on the wall. Is she the thinnest of them all? It was a food phobia, she said, not disordered eating. Which was ridiculous, as a phobia of food must be disordered eating, mustn't it? The everyday apple became a week's feast. Carefully measured pieces of boring health became battlefields, or tight roped negotiations for those of us with the patience. Mura, Mura on the wall, is she the thinnest of them all? No, but she's close, she's becoming ghostly. Pat me downs came my way and didn't concern me, they were too big for me. Later, more came and fitted, which was handy. The next set were too small for me, or too big for her, and she was pleased. <coughs> this is the bit where I acknowledge my privilege and say that I know I'm lucky to be born in the West quite reasonable amount of money, but not everyone has these things, and if you can use that privilege to kind of show awareness, then why not? Baby, you can't have a toy gun for Christmas. Baby, you can't have a toy gun for Christmas. I'll say it's because of war that we glamorize it for our children, making it about the winning might being right. The sound of heavy, thudding, polished boots in unison are treated as more important than the sounds of the downtrodden underneath. I'll say the earth cries out for an end of fighting. The land needs time to thrive and grow without the burning and destruction. I'll say blessed are the peacemakers, the talkers, the negotiators. I'll tell you that mediating is a skill, controlling your temper is a gift, and calming anger in others is a God-given miracle. I'll tell you this, and this is true. But it's not my reason. It's not my reason in my heart. You are what's in my heart, and should you choose to be a soldier, I will fear for your life every day, but I will support you. After all, I already fear for your life every day. That black plastic lacquered so convincingly to make it look like steel, it's not lacquered convincingly, of course it isn't, it's a cheap thing, a shoddy thing made in the sweatshop by a child wanting to feed other children. It's not convincing in the slightest, but there are those who will see its dull mask as a steely glint when the sun hits it. They'll see its poorly moulded barrel as a container for fire, the lightweight body you toss in the air as a weighty threat, or they'll say they do. They will paint their eyes closed with excuses and say, you squeezed the trigger. The trigger our toy maker didn't attach as the lack of an inner mechanism didn't call for one. They'll say your arm bowed beneath the weight of the coldness. They'll say your head bowed with intent. They'll say your eyes glared when your eyes just smile at the world always. Your finger points up and it is not a finger. It is an inciting incident. It is the inciting incident and it follows them chases them, stops their hearts with fear, with doctrine. It is an attempt for you to control your life and as such it must be stopped. No <laughs> noises, because fear makes them change. Fear distorts them to gunpowder whip cracks, ears distort them to immediate threats to either eradicate or be eradicated. You have a darkness, not in you but on you, on your skin and they will interpret that how they will because their darkness is all inside making monsters, making myths, making mistakes, and all without radioing for backup, as a split-second decision is a fait accompli and the powers that be approve.
It's because of the combination of sights and sounds of not your toy but you. And though the piece of black plastic will get the blame, it's the living, breathing black that causes it all. You would get your trial now, of course. We're no more as hidden as we were, but such a trial is as real as the threat you caused and nothing will be resolved. We shine, we do. And those who do not shine want to dull us. I'll dull you myself if I have to, to keep you silent.